Hey, what's up guys and welcome to this video tutorial on our latest template called Animated Product Labels. It's a really neat little template that will allow you to create shots like these um, that you've probably already seen in the promo video. And what this template does is basically it allows you to animate product labels rotating around those products and you can create these high-end looking slow motion shots that are typically done using expensive and complex 3D apps and you can do that directly in After Effects. All right, so there are essentially three key elements to this uh, template. Um, actually make that four. So the first one is this dashboard, which is a great place to get an overview of your project. Here at the top, you have a preview window where you can get a picture of what your bottle looks like. Then down below, you have easy access to all of your textures. And on top of that, you have a, this controls layer here uh, where you can adjust the look of your bottle. So let's start on the labels and see how we can update them in our scenes. Essentially, there are four elements that make up a label. Uh, you don't have to use them all, as for example, if your label doesn't have any embossed features, then you can simply leave this guy blank. But if we go through them uh, one by one, then uh, here is where you add your main label. Then here we have the metallic uh, highlights mask. Uh, and so this tells our label what is going to be metallic. Uh, and as you can see here at the top, we have uh, some notes uh, saying uh, metallic mask has to be white on transparent background. So that's some tips for you so you know how to set up each one of these um, layers. Uh, then next we have the label mask. And the mask, as you can tell by the shape here, uh, it tells our label what should be visible and what should be transparent. So for example, if we're using a JPEG for our main label uh, and it had a, a white background behind this, then the mask would help to get rid of it. And then last one is our embossed mask. And what this does is uh, it tells the label which elements should be embossed. And as you can see here, our metallic letters are all embossed. So that's how you add your labels. And if you want to replace an existing label image with another one, then you simply uh, find a different label. Say this guy. Then I hold the Alt or the Option key on the keyboard. I drag it over this guy over here. I release the mouse, then release the key, and that swaps out the two assets. So that's pretty much the process for setting up your labels. Next, let's take a look at how do we go about customizing the look uh, of, of our bottle. So you can either do it here using the, this preview window, or what I sometimes like to do is I like to lock this effects tab and then go into my shots. And I can use my shot one as it gives me a little bit more space to work with. So let's see what kind of uh, controls do we have here. First of all, we can choose whether this is a paper sticker label or a printed label like the one you would uh, typically see on a shampoo bottle. And if we toggle between them, you'll see that the sticker has a drop shadow here at the bottom and a bit of a lip here at the, at the top. Then in emboss, we can say whether we want our label to have any embossed elements. Uh, we can switch it to none or we can set it to debossed, which makes uh, makes them inset inwards. Um, here, you can see that. Then we can also add a paper texture. And you have a couple of different options here. In addition to that, you also have an option here to remove the paper texture from any metallic surfaces. It's quite common that these areas will lose their texture after the label is being stamped with a, with a metallic foil. Then here we can say whether we want to add highlight distortion. Um, and I think it's best visible on glass. So when looking at the glass real close, you'll see that glass actually has a lot of imperfections. And, and this is what we can simulate here. Uh, however, if you're working on say some high-end cosmetics products um, where you want the highlights to be super sharp, then you can turn this guy off. Uh, so that's the general area. 
And then next we have some controls here to adjust the label itself. So let's see what we can do here. We can change the opacity of the highlight. And as you can see, the highlight gets really, really shiny. But say if we have a, a non-glossy, like a matte paper for your label, then we can use this softness controller here to diffuse its reflection. You see that? Okay, so I'm gonna set that back to zero. And then I can also say whether I want any metallic highlights. And this is using our metallic highlights texture layer to tell the label which of the areas should be metallic. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see the difference that this uh, effect creates. Once again, you can adjust its opacity and softness uh, here below to tweak how they look uh, on our label. We can also set a, a color for our metallic highlights. So sometimes you might have uh, gold foiling here. And then in that case, uh, you might want to kind of give your highlights a, more of a, a yellow or an orange tint. And then this last guy over here will, uh, it will allow you to darken your metallic areas um, in order to give them more contrast. Metallic elements tend to look different under different lighting conditions. So this guy will help you to kind of, kind of really dial that in. Um, all right, and that's the controls we have here over the label. Uh, next is the bottle. All right, and so there are two types of bottles that we can choose from here, a glass one and a solid. So solid can be used for any non-see-through bottles, so like metallic cans or plastic bottles. And the glass can be used for any, uh, any glass bottles. Solid is pretty straightforward, so I'll just uh, switch this to glass uh, and we can see how that works. Here, once again, we can uh, adjust the opacity and the softness of our highlights. So you can make it super shiny or say a little bit less shiny. Uh, and you can also change the softness of those highlights. Um, for glass, you'll probably want to keep it at zero, but then when creating a plastic bottle, you'll want to soften these highlights to achieve a, a realistic sort of plastic look. Sorry, and I seem to have jumped uh, the color. So, so we can make it blue. Nice, and I can and I think actually darker colors tend to, to work better here. And then in general, like when it comes to glass bottle photography, one thing that photographers tend to do is add a, a hotspot light uh, in behind the bottle to give it a, a brighter color in the middle. Uh, so for that, we've added this setting over here called the glass bottle inner glow. And you can use it to simulate that light behind the bottle and how bright it appears. So if I set it to zero, you'll see that it looks uh, a little boring and unrealistic. But then if I bump it up to 90, we get this super bright highlight in the middle. And let's just bring it down a bit. And this is a very common uh, lighting kind of effect or look uh, that's used when shooting uh, wine bottles. And say if I set my bottle color to a dark green, to see how well that highlight plays into creating a, a realistic looking uh, wine bottle. Then we also have the bottle opacity here, where we can make it uh, fully transparent, like say a bottle of vodka or gin. And then we just turn off this inner glow as it doesn't make sense here. And you can see how the background uh, comes through our bottle. And then we can also blur the background uh, so in this case, um, we're already using a blurry background with lots of bokeh. So, um, but if you had a photo of a city street or let's say, uh, I don't know, like a field of flowers that were fully in focus, then you can bump up this guy to give it, uh, to give the bottle more blurriness and create a more sort of realistic look. So as you can see, this is a really cool system uh, here that kind of gives you a ton of control over pretty much every aspect of the bottle and its label. Um, and in essence, you should be able to, I think, you know, create pretty much any kind of bottle you want here within reason, but yeah. All right then, so we've covered the dashboard, uh, the textures and how you can customize your bottle. Now, the last thing that we need to discuss here is our shots themselves. 
Uh, and essentially this template comes with five fully set up shots with uh, different camera angles, um, which you can use as a, a starting point for whatever it is that you're creating. And so we're on shot one now, and let's just stay here and I'll just unlock the effects tab so that I'm seeing the controls that I have for this particular shot. And once again, they are on this uh, control layer over here. So to start with, let's play around with our lighting. And I think this is a very cool feature as it gives uh, us pretty much the same control you'd get uh, uh, when you, if you were building this uh, in, a, in a proper 3D app. So here at the top, we have five different lighting setups that you can switch between. And, um, and then depending on the shot you're on and, and your camera angle and the type of a product you're using, you can pick a, a, a setup that works best for you. Then you can also flip your lights, which is uh, great for continuity. If say you had this shot followed by another one from a different camera angle, but you wanted to maintain the same lighting setup. And then you can also offset your lights to, to kind of further adjust their position. Then with this guy, you can also adjust where your hotspot falls on the bottle. And as you can see, that will allow you to create uh, very unique looks um, for your shots. And I'll set that back to zero for now. So as you can see, we have lots of control over your lighting here, and you can really dial in the look of, uh, of each one of the shots. Uh, next, we have blur, which adds uh, depth of field uh, to your camera and allows you to set certain areas out of focus. And as you can see here, we only have the middle of the bottle in focus while everything else uh, looks soft and blurry. And so this whole blur effect is controlled via this uh, blur map comp over here. Now this might look a little confusing, but if I compare it to my actual shot and switch between them quickly, You'll see that this is the same bottle here and its position and rotation and everything else automatically adjusts uh, based on the main shot. So the background over here is black and whatever is black gets pushed out of focus. And then areas that are white, they remain in focus. And so if I select my bottle shape layer and go over here, I can play around with this light direction parameter and I can set which parts of the bottle should stay in focus. So if I go back to my main shot, I can see that that area now stays in focus while this actually falls out of focus. And I can go back and forth uh, to see how that changed. Uh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And so you can even animate this um, and that will create a changing focal point um, throughout your shot. Okay, and so that's our blur and I'll turn that off for now. And so next is our three bottle rotation settings. And basically you can use these three guys to position your bottle in the shot. So if I set these uh, to zero and zero, we'll see that the bottle is looking at us uh, straight on. Now let me just set this resolution to maybe a third so we can see this in real time and if I Rotate it on x-axis, we'll see that the bottle is uh, tilting towards or away from the camera. And then I can use this guy to rotate it from side to side. And this to rotate the, the bottle along the y-axis. So you should essentially use these guys to set up your shot. And then you can use the camera to actually animate the camera in your shot. Uh, and then finally we have animation uh, and this establishes how quickly your bottle is rotating along its uh, y-axis and essentially this is what gives us that uh, effect of the bottle rotating in front of our camera. So if you want to slow down the rotation you can set it to maybe 0.2 and you'll get that uh, slow motion look and then you can set the value to negative and that will have the bottle rotating uh, counterclockwise. And so this is a great way to quickly control your bottle rotation in the shot.
Um, and so that's the controls that we have for each one of the shots. And so as you can see, you have tons of freedom here to set these up exactly as you please. And, um, and if you want to, you can play around with the camera and, and you can pull it back uh, further and zoom out and then uh, rotate and uh, oh, oh, oh what, what's going on here? Oh no, the curtain has fallen and we can see the trick that's making this whole CGI like bottle effect possible. <laughs> uh, and as you can see, this is uh, not the whole bottle. And we're really just playing around with the cylindrical projection uh, effect that comes with After Effects. Um, so yes, unfortunately that means that you won't be able to show your whole bottle and that you will be limited to how far you can rotate a camera. And it also won't work with the square or maybe like non-round or like odd shaped bottles. But if you work within those constraints, you can actually create these really awesome, super professional looking uh, product shots. Uh, but yeah, this is how you can use the camera to rotate around this guy as if it was a real 3D object. Um, all right, and I think that wraps up our video tutorial. Um, and like always, feel free to send us an email or leave a comment below if you have any questions or, or even suggestions about uh, using this template.